started. First, a chassis was built. Next, the engine. A 350 small block Chevy was acquired. Then they did a three and a half inch chop to the roof of this all steel body, giving it a nice back stance. Finally, they painted the car a vibrant red and had the famous ZZ insignia painted on each side. The Eliminator was six years in the making, but to Billy, it was all worth it. Just the sheer mass exposure, which MTV helped propel, and seeing it in motion and uh, bigger than life on television actually did broaden the base of the interest in hot rodding in general. It's been a real propellant. The Eliminator typifies what hot rodding was to become, a way for owners to express their own unique personalities creativity and style. It also spawned an explosion of three window bright red coupes. And Billy didn't stop at the Eliminator. He currently owns several well-known hot rods and his newest addition, this gorgeous black 32 Roadster. And the trends continue to evolve and to look at this car closely you see that it represents something that probably would have been on the streets in about 40, 1948. That's beautiful Billy. Keep on rocking and riding. Next up, we travel back in time with the Shifters, a nostalgic hot rod club in Southern California. These dudes live and breathe everything old school hot riding. The flashiness of the 80s welcomed something totally revolutionary and modern and hot rodding. Cars is art. Car designers and artists started dreaming up and building their own idea of a hot rod. And the cars started getting more and more high tech. And they, and they started smoothing the hot rods and taking the chrome off and putting machined aluminum parts on them and what they called billet parts that were made out of blocks of aluminum carved and machined. They would actually fabricate new hoods with different lines than what Ford made, and this look evolved. Much to the disgust of many hot rodding purists. At that time, the whole street rodding industry, to me, was just gross. A 49 Ford had painted bumpers and painted grills, and, and everything was neon colors and, and lime green and peach colors. It was just sickening. By the time the 90s rolled around, Things were not much different. Hot rod shops were still churning out these bright, candy-coated creations. But one Southern California car club donned their 50s jackets, slicked back their hair, stripped down their cars, and said, we're not going to take it anymore. This rowdy group of throwback rebels crashed the snooty Paso Robles car show in 1992. We all pulled in to this park that had a thousand chopped 49 Mercury's sitting there. And we pulled up with the headers and all the exhaust uh, uncorked and making all kinds of noise and stuff. And, and uh, we all pulled in fashionably late, uh, knowing everybody would already be there one after another. People just really freaked out on the whole thing. And magazines from that point forward were saying, when the shifter's pulling a Paso Robles, you better hide your daughters. Freelance photojournalist, uh, pulled up and said, hey, what do you guys call these kind of cars? And our, our member replied and said, I guess you'd call them rat rods. The term rat rod came about because these cars are kind of ratty. The rat rod is the very basic stripped down hot rod. No frills, no extras, uh, put together with parts found at a swap meet in the, or in your backyard. To us, a rat rod is a pre-war hot rod that is not so perfect. It could be a coupe, it could be a roadster, it could be a sedan, but it's a car that's just, it's not show quality, and it's not supposed to be. These guys and their rat rods are pretty cool, but not everybody agreed when the shifters first came onto the hot rodding scene. A lot of people at that time in the early 90s, when we started really busting out with a bunch of cars at these uh, street rod events, they just didn't know what to make of the whole thing. And some of the cars looked so period correct as they were built in the 40s and 50s, we really stood out like a sore thumb back then. But now, these guys are in high demand. Once a year, the shifters put on a rockabilly car show, 
Viva Las Vegas. They draw cars and crowds from all over the world. Held every Easter weekend. The last show brought in over 700 cars. But don't think any old jalopy will fly. The car show is exclusively for pre-63, American-made, nostalgic hot rods and traditional customs only. No muscle cars, no high-tech cars, no fiberglass cars of any shape or form are allowed at this um, car show. Damn, no muscle cars? I gotta meet these guys. This is Alex Axel Izzardi of the Shifters. He's part of a tight-knit group of nine guys, and they all have nicknames. And their rat rods are just as cool as their names. This is a 1929 Ford Roadster that is channeled over a uh, 32 Ford frame. It is what I consider, in my opinion, the epitome of a hot rod. Originally, in the late 40s, the car had a flathead Ford V8. In the mid 50s, times changed, obviously, and cubic inches um, increased. So now, this holds a 324 cubic inch Oldsmobile engine with three cars, and it's totally put together like they were back in the day. The clear spark plug wires, it's something that was made a long time ago and not reproduced. The, uh, the wolf whistle was just probably one of the most commonly over-the-counter bought items in the 1950s. Every hoodlum in the 50s, whether he had a hot rod or a custom or a bone stock car, had a wolf whistle. And he's going down the road and he saw a couple pretty gals walking down the street and hit that. What really stands out over anything on this car and anything that a lot of other cars have is the fact that it has these rare obsolete spinner knockoffs. As you can see, it says Vita Special. Vita Orr was a female hot rodder in the 1940s who not only helped build the cars their own and weren't afraid to get their, their fingers dirty, but um, raced these cars. And she broke many records and had somebody make these for her. There's only a couple sets known to exist in the world. This rat rod, the purple people eater, was once the black sheep of hot rod. That's because of its unorthodox look, sound, and overall style. Now, it's the envy of every nostalgic car club. Let's see how this monster was built. The car started out as a 30, 31 Ford Model A coupe with the rear trunk section cut off. Then, the body was chopped seven inches and channeled over the frame seven inches. The rear of the frame was then Z, or kicked up. This helps lower the car. People ask us all the time, what does it take to get in the shifters? And people might find it a bit arrogant or, or whatever, but you just don't. OK, Axel, this is a very prestigious club. Now, is there any initiation? Yeah, there is. Uh, initiations consist of beer dousings and a lot of nudity. Our uh, last member, Squeak Bell, from Bakersfield, uh, we made him uh, strip down to nothing but his uh, bare underpants at our car show at Viva Las Vegas. Made him run around the parking lot a couple times, and when he got back to camp, we doused him with a lot of beer, and for extra shock value, he pulled down his pants in front of the camera. Wow, now cool. Uh, I've already done that, so how about let's take one of these babies for a spin? Sure. Cool. This 1932 Ford three-window coupe has been chopped and channeled. It rides on 16-inch tires with little and big white walls, and it's powered by a 49 Ford flathead V8 engine. It has aluminum heads, dual carbs, and can hit 100 miles an hour. It's in our blood, and, and we're going to be here 10 or 20 years from now. When we return, we'll see what it takes to build your own custom hot rod today, from a bare bones chassis to a finished ride. Don't you move. Hot rodding has been around for almost 100 years, but it has always maintained an aura of danger, nostalgia, and just plain cool. More than ever, hot rodders are recreating the old traditional hot rod style. 
but with a mixture of parts. Some vintage, some thoroughly modern. Bottom line, the love for building and driving these cars will never die. The most exciting thing happening in hot rodding today is, is a return to style, originality, and the respect for this unexpected pop culture phenomenon. Hot riding keeps changing, keeps morphing, keeps going in different directions, and now the fun thing is that you can build any kind of car and you know any any style, any year. Perfect Touch Street Rods of Reno, Nevada is a prime example of what's fresh in hot rod. They've been churning out the finest in hot rods for 11 years. Everything but the upholstery is done right here in-house, and you can build your hot rod completely made to order. And today, we're going to see exactly how it's done and build a replica of a 41 Willys. A Willys um, originally was a car that was produced in the 30s and 40s. They became popular on the drag strips in the 60s. And now, there's kind of been an increased interest in the car for street riders, and uh, they're being built into street-driven cars now. They start with this prefabricated chassis you see right here. Rich Murray will take us through the build. So this part of the car is actually finished. First, we're going to get the front tires on in order to get the uh, engine lift underneath it, because right now, where the jack stands are, we can't do that. These beauties are billet specialty wheels called Legacy. They're made to look like the old-style Halibrand racing wheels of the 60s, very slick. Next, radial tires are added for safety. When you're putting together a car like this, you really don't want to use air tools not a good thing. All this chrome hardware, you can gold it real bad with a tool, knock the chrome off of it. Just in this, this chassis right here, we probably have $3,000 in chrome. So you don't want to damage that. And building one of these babies, top to bottom, will set you back over six figures. Because we've got a, a lug nut cover, and then we take this special nut, which is left-hand thread, and we bring that up to the bottom there. Now it looks like an old-style wheel. We're going to go ahead and do the install of, of a 1957 Chrysler Hemi. Um, it was a 392 to start with. It's been punched out to 488. We've probably got somewhere around 7 to 800 horsepower right now. It's got a 671 blower on it. We have heel borne fuel injection. We've got a nice B Cool aluminum radiator with dual cooling fans made by Spall. The car will hold an aluminum radiator called the Triple Pass which means that the radiator coolant will pass through three times, cool down, and go back into the engine. And when you're talking about horsepower like this, you need to cool the engine as much as possible to avoid a meltdown. These are a custom set of brakes made by a company called Willwood. They're also the same caliper. It's the rotor and caliper put out by them, complete with chrome and finished backing plates. It has a built-in parking brake. They're fully polished calipers. Then we also have uh, custom bent stainless steel brake lines and all the little fittings are stainless steel, fully polished. The nice part about this stage of building the car is the fact that it's all clean, finished, painted, and you don't get dirty doing it. When you're all finished with it, you can stand back and look at it. It's like looking at a piece of artwork. The rest of the car will be built in fiberglass as opposed to steel, a cheaper and just as durable alternative. With a steel car, um, you know, you're dealing with a car that's maybe 60 or 70 years old. So during that, that time, there's been collision damage. Um, some of the car has been eaten away by rust. Um, some of the prior repairs may not have been done correctly. So to get the car to the point where you're ready to paint it takes an awful lot of labor. Whereas with a fiberglass car, you're starting with something that's brand new and uh, you're a lot closer to being able to actually put paint on the car and finish it. Right now, this seems to be a real popular car with baby boomers, and they watched it go down the drag strip, and now they can afford it. Thanks, Rich and John. You know, that thing is amazing. Makes me want to run out and buy a Willys. Did I really say that? Anyway, as for the future of hot rodding, there's a feeling now that there's something out there for everybody. Hot rodding is do it yourself. Make it different. Use your ingenuity. Make your car your car.
The appeal of hot rodding is pure Americana. The fact that anybody can take a car or take pieces of a car and put a car together, build it, and drive it. And the interesting thing about hot rodding is you don't have to go fast to have fun. It's not like having a new Viper Corvette. You can cruise down the street at 20 miles an hour and, and have kids pointing and waving and, and families smiling at you, and you're having a great time, and people are enjoying seeing these great old cars on the road. But the one unanimous opinion among hot rodders is a wish for more owners to get their cars out of the garages and onto the roads, and to show the young kids just how cool hot rodding can actually be. I'm Bill Goldberg. Thanks for watching.